Hi everyone and welcome back to Coffee with My Sunshine. So today's video is a little bit different and a lot of fun. I am collabing with a sweet lady here on YouTube. Her channel is Trees' Treasure. I will link that in the description box below for you to check out. She also recently joined in on my Using Trash to Create Treasure Challenge. She does fantastic DIYs. So after you are done watching my video, head on over to her channel and check her out. Show her some love and tell her I sent you. So the idea of this collab was to find something that someone had put out on the curb furniture wise that we could grab and basically flip. I could not, I search and search and search. And of course, when you want something, you can't find it or nobody puts anything out. But I went to this estate sale and a couple garage sales. This chair I found at the estate sale for a dollar. It has a little bit of damage, but I thought this was perfect for this challenge and it just needed a little bit of TLC and fixing up. It was only a dollar and they were going to be either donating what was left or putting it out for the trash. So perfect for the challenge. I thought I'd also show you what I got the same day at another garage sale. That jar was only a dollar and I thought that was super cute and wanted to use it in my laundry room. This basket I got from Goodwill. It was only 99 cents. These eucalyptus branches I thought were a big score. I love eucalyptus. Um, these came in a bag, a really big bag of eucalyptus branches and other greenery, mostly of the eucalyptus. In the whole bag, she charged me $5, which if you know, if you've been to like Hobby Lobby or anything, you know that those are super expensive. So I grabbed that right away. And also this little organization drawer thing. I really desperately need to organize my craft room and clean it up. So if you'd like to like a video on that, let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to make one for you. So on to refinishing this chair. I'm just going to be using this stain. I had already washed the chair and gave it a light sanding. And I'm just going to be applying the stain all over and kind of bringing back new life to it. I didn't want to make it too dark. I still liked the, you know, the little bit of gray that it had to it. That's why I went with this natural stain. So for this collab, I was contacted by Trey's after the Using Trash to Create Treasure Challenge. And I was so excited when she asked if we could do a collab because you know how much I love meeting new friends here on YouTube and doing DIYs. She has some really fantastic DIYs on her channel and she's so sweet. She has a crazy story to go along with her furniture flip. I believe she's going to be telling it in her video. So, okay, anyway, after I stained the chair, I forgot I was going to paint those little spindle things, so I went back over and sanded it. I'm just using a little bit of white chalk paint mixed with um, uh, this creamy color. And I started off by using a foam brush, but it's not what I would recommend. I would use the chalk paint brushes, which I'll show you here shortly and also list them in the description box. So the name of this challenge or collab she came up with and I thought it was such a cute name. It was called Creative Curb Challenge. We tossed around a couple different ideas um, but finally settled on that one and I think it totally describes what we're doing. I had a lot of fun with this one because I really like um, refinishing furniture which I might start doing more on my channel. I know I asked you a while back if you guys would be interested in seeing that and I got a a lot of positive reactions to that so I will be incorporating more of those on my channel as well along with just the regular DIYs and um, it's been a little bit crazy around here but I'm also going to be doing some recipe and cleaning videos here and there it's just been hard to find the time lately so now I'm just painting these spindles I think that's what they're called I always forget 
I'm painting them white and then the little sections that I'm kind of leaving um, the brown color are going to be gray. So then after finishing up with the white, this is the gray chalk paint that I'm going to be using. It's called Steel. And here I am trying the foam brush again and I didn't like how it was coating so I just went ahead and used a regular, a regular paint brush. And I really like the Waverly chalk paint because it covers really, really well. And if there's anything else you guys want to see, anything different, anything out there, <laughs> any requests or suggestions, please let me know. I love your guys' ideas and input for the channel. I want it to be something you guys really enjoy watching. So after the chalk paint had dried, I just went over with um, sandpaper and did a little bit of distressing. And I started out light and then went a little bit more heavy handed. I did it on the chalk paint and a little bit on the wood part where I had stained and then wiped it off with a cloth. And then for the cushion that I'm making, I am using this leftover fabric that I had from when I did our camper redo, which isn't completely finished yet, but I can link that also if you guys are interested. So I just kind of took this fabric and traced the seat so that I got like the basic shape of the cushion and then um, went ahead and cut it out and did, I did two of these. And since I've been really into trying new techniques that I've never done before, like I did in yesterday's video, I will link that if you guys are interested, but I am taking some of this um, blue chalk paint by Velspar. I will show you a picture of that in a second. And I just am trying the um, chalk paint painting on fabric technique, I guess. And you just, um, what you want to do is water down the chalk paint and you want to do there really isn't a um, recipe or certain measurement for this it's all in like how you like the coating but um, from what I read the heavier you go like the less water you add the heavier you go on the paint the more cracking you're going to get on the fabric so I went about at first I started a little bit heavy and then I just went ahead and did like a one-to-one, -one, like one paint, like say a quarter of a cup of the paint and then a quarter of a cup of water. And then just went ahead and coated the fabric. It looks super blotchy right now, but as it dries, it dries more even. And I coated both pieces of the fabric. I did two coats. For the second coat, I did a more watered down um, version than the first coat. And then basically I let those dry all day because they said to like set it out in the sun to get like a, a heat setting type thing or you could throw it in the dryer after it had dried or use an iron. Like I said, after it's dried, you do the heat setting. But it was a super rainy day so I put them in our sunroom and let them dry under the ceiling fan. And then I took our iron on a low setting and just did the heat setting that way and that's supposed to make it so that you can um, wash it but I don't know I I don't know if I would trust it if you do wash it maybe try it by itself before you add anything in with it I won't be washing it because it's just going to be the cushion you know on my chair which eventually once once I get my craft room um, organized and cleaned up. This is going to be my desk chair. So after the fabric had dried and I had done the heat setting, I'm going to sew them together and you want to put right side together. So like the good side of the paint together while, before you sew it because you want the, um, the hem or I don't know, you want the thread on the inside once you're done. So you turn it inside out after you're done sewing it and then it will be right side out, if that makes sense. I'm sure it does to anybody who sews. I'm not a sewer whatsoever. So we'll cross our fingers that this cushion turns out right. <laughs> so after running it through the sewing machine, I went ahead and turned it right side out. 
And um, don't forget when you're sewing to leave a good amount of opening that you don't sew um, so that you can obviously turn it in right side out and then add um, the stuffing. And then you can seal it up by hand sewing it. And basically after you're done with the cushion, you're all set. I really like the look of the fabric with the chalk paint technique. It kind of gives it like a, like a washed out look. I guess you could go darker or heavier depending on, you know, what color, but I really like this. I think it goes really well with the rustic chair. Let me know what you guys think of this chair flip. I had a lot of fun doing it and hope to do more. And I can't wait to check out Trey's video. Also, let me know in the comments below what kind of furniture you guys would like to see redone. I know it seems to be really popular right now on YouTube, like furniture flips. So let me know if there's anything um, different or interesting. Like I said, I love your ideas and want your input for um, some video ideas. I hope you guys really liked this collab and don't forget to check out Trey's Treasures channel. Thanks so much for your love and support, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye!